am infinitely grateful to be able to spend time today with all of you, every single person on here um, from every school, all of the students and the teachers. And I'm going to spend some time um, talking to you about some things that I hope will be helpful for you on your journey. And, and before I say that, let me just say, yes, 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 yes. Oh my gosh. Those vehicles that I just saw that you all just did in about one hour, fantastic. I got to sit in one of the breakout rooms and, and watch you kind of work it out and ask questions and figure it out and try and try again. And even now when you were demonstrating, you know, say, okay, let's, let's figure this out. Like that is what we do, right? That's what engineers do. We do it, we do it together, we figure it out. We fall down seven times and get up eight, right? Because we know that we're gonna be able to solve a problem and we do it with other engineers, with technology people, with skilled trades people. Like we make amazing things happen for this world. And so I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my journey and a little bit about what I do at General Motors and at my company. And, um, and hopefully uh, you all are so energized that uh, I help you build even more energy. So I'm gonna talk to you about taking the leap um, and about creating new beginnings at every step of your life. Um, this is super exciting for me um, with all of you super creative, curious, um, you know, challenge ready students. Um, I'm thankful to give this presentation to you because, because you matter. And, and everything is about taking the leap. You know, all of us on any given day, myself included, on this day, am wondering, do I have what it takes to do something that's on my mind? Do I have what it takes to figure out the things that I need to figure out? You know, some days it seems like a lot. Some days it seems like there's nothing that's working in your favor, right? And what we have to do on all of those days is figure out what is working in our favor because there's never a complete void. There's always something. Engineering tomorrow, this experience you're having right now is working in your favor. And what leap might it inspire you to take today? So for me, my first beginning was with this thing that you see on the screen on the left-hand side. And what you see on the left-hand side is an artificial heart. And on the right-hand side, you see a real heart. And in the early 80s, and, and those of you that like math, which many of you may, can do the math and figure out how old I am, but I was um, right about to start high school. And I was watching a television show, um, and it was about the implantation of the first artificial heart. And um, there was this doctor, and his name was Robert Jarvik, who was who had designed this heart, working with some engineers, and um, they successfully implanted this heart in a human for the first time. And there was a show about it, and I'm watching this show, and I'm just completely shocked, just completely shocked. Like, how is that even possible? You basically have a mechanical device that's going to go into a human body and it's gonna pump blood for them, right? And you see the artificial heart has a left ventricle and a right ventricle, just like the real heart. And it's got pumps and it's got flow and it's got, you know, connective, connect, it's got connections to the real arteries in the human body. And this man lived, the one that received the artificial heart. But when I got done with the show, when I got done with the show, I was like, hmm, you know, we can pretend that's me. You know, my hair wasn't that cute back then, but we'll pretend. <laughs> when I got done with that show, I was like, oh, what? like, wait a minute, like, that's cool. I would love to be able to do something like that. And um, I had considered being a doctor, but then I was also hearing about this, this, these people that the doctor worked with that were called engineers. And I didn't know what an engineer was. And so here I was, you know, 
almost 14 years old. I didn't know what an engineer was. So I went and asked my dad. My dad said, well, you know, in that like the people that drive the train? And I was like, no, this, this person helped make a heart, you know? And so he told me what he always told me, which at the time had to be said, which was go to the library, right? We didn't have Google, couldn't look it up, wasn't happening. So I did that and I started doing research. Now we do do that today, right? We do research and we figure out things that we're curious about. And so that's what I did. And I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what this engineering thing is because I had heard about the doctor thing. And in that, I learned about mechanical engineering and this is a mechanical heart. I learned about electrical engineering and I learned about um, chemical engineering. And, and I decided, I said, you know, I think I want to be an engineer. I think I want to help people. You know, so whereas before I was thinking, you know, I want to be a doctor, I thought I can help people this way. And I went to my school guidance counselor and I said, you know, I think I want to be an engineer. And this was a long time ago, right? And the and the and and the guidance counselor said, Well, tell the, you know, you, you're doing well in school, but you know, there aren't many women in engineering. And there really aren't many black people in engineering. Um, it could be a really hard course for you. And I'm not sure if you really want to do that. So that wasn't exactly encouraging. But I have been inspired by what I'd read and what I'd learned watching that show. And I thought, you know, I think I really do want to do this. So I continued to, to work in school. I didn't have organizations like Engineering Tomorrow that could give me experiences like the one you had today, but I was inspired just like hopefully you are today. And so I kept going. And I don't know if you can see this, I hope you can see this, but if you can't, up the top it says, you know, consistent be beginnings. And we have to build building blocks so that we can grow. And so, you know, you all, built electric vehicles today. We have these things called letters that build words and words build sentences and sentences build stories and stories turn into books, right? Um, you know, everything that we do is about building the small building blocks of language, of math, of science, one at a time and putting them together and forming amazing things that allow us to take to take leaps, ideas, ideas like, like beauty, like happiness, like truth, create things that wouldn't otherwise be created when you put them together and allow them to form a string of, of actions and experiences for people. And so I just started kind of doing the things that I needed to do. I kept going to school, I kept doing well, I would read, I would learn, and I would ask a lot of questions of people that didn't necessarily want to hear them. But what I was doing that whole time was gathering information and trying to figure out how to do what I need to do. And so I kept going. And eventually life happened and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that. And I've landed at the place where I'm at right now where I have a wonderful family. I have a wonderful husband and three children. He's a great partner. Um, I'm able to do a lot of things um, that make me happy. And I volunteer a lot of my time, like Milton mentioned earlier, um, with, with Engineering Tomorrow, Girl Scouts and other organizations. And so I'll talk about my journey. So as was mentioned, eventually I got to go to Purdue. And how did that happen? It just so happened that the university reached out to my school um, because they had seen my test scores and they said, you know, you have a student there and several students actually at my school that we may be interested in supporting through a program. And it was called Minority Introduction to Engineering. And so Minority Introduction to Engineering offered by what would soon become my university was my way that I started learning about engineering and where I got some experiences like the one you got today and in other ET labs that you may have experienced so far. Um, and by the time that happened, I kind of knew I wanted to be an electrical engineer. And more specifically, I wanted to be a biomedical engineer because I want to design devices that could help people. Um, and so through that experience with Purdue, I applied to a lot of engineering schools. It really solidified that's what I want to do. And, um, and, I, and I got in um, to Purdue and, and was fortunate 
um, to be able to, to go to Purdue with a scholarship as well, um, which was provided by uh, NASA, um, where, where Milton is, and which is an absolutely phenomenal um, organization and one that, that breeds um, fantastic talent that does amazing things. And so I was, was really fortunate to be able to have experience with NASA. And ultimately, when I graduated after working with NASA um, during the summers and after them helping to pay for my uh, education, I was able to hire in with a company that was a contractor to NASA called Spheredrip Technologies. And I started there as what's called a test operations engineer. And so you'll see the second picture, like this girl in a hard hat, like that was me, a hard hat with prints in her hands. And, and I, would, I would instrument test labs that were testing combustion engines and that were testing de-icing mechanisms for plane for, for planes, and even instrumentation for the supersonic wind tunnels that we had at the NASA center that I, that I worked at. Um, and it was very hands-on and very intricate and a lot of you know, device uh, programming um, with programmable logic controllers and things like that. Very hands-on, very in the dirt. It was awesome. And it was great learning because I was able to see so many type, different types of technologies. And I was able to use what I had learned in an electrical engineering school at work, but I was also able to start learning mechanical concepts. Um, and so I did that for a little while. And then I, I um, transitioned to General Motors and started in a manufacturing plant um, in Indiana. So I've been at a research center in Ohio, the NASA Lewis, now NASA Glenn Research Center in Ohio. And then I moved over to General Motors as a controls engineer, because I knew all these device controls and I knew programming and I knew robots. And so I started with General Motors and, and I worked on programming and automation for machinery and equipment. Um, and a lot of um, major equipment projects where I got into a lot of high voltage work and, and a, lot of, um, a lot of robotic control, which is very, very important that you keep people safe um, while you do that. Uh, so I was able to do that and design new machines and upgrade machines and keep equipment running so that we could produce the, the vehicles that we were producing. And at the time, I was in a truck plant that made about a thousand, a million um, uh, parts per year. So we were always working very busy. And eventually, my career continued to evolve, and I was able to lead um, um, I was able to be a leader in manufacturing engineering, which um, means I wasn't working in a manufacturing plant anymore. I was working at headquarters where I was planning years ahead of time what machines we would put into our sites and then working with the, en with the engineers and other project managers in designing and building those machines. And these are multi-million dollar machines. And what's really cool about this evolution Every single thing I'm talking to you about was a new beginning for me. I went to school as an electrical engineer. I learned how to program devices when I went to NASA. I learned how to program controllers. I learned how to program robots. I didn't know how to do any of those things, but I figured it out because one thing engineering school does is it teaches you how to solve problems. It also teaches you that you can't do many things alone. So you work in teams, you work with skilled trades, you work with technologists, and, and, and you all solve problems together. And so everything I did was a new beginning, but I always had the foundation that I could build upon. The other thing that was great about what was going on, I was born in Dayton, Ohio. Um, I went to school in Indiana at Purdue. I went and worked back in Ohio, and then I went back to Indiana to start at General Motors. General Motors gave me the opportunity to have an assignment in Canada, and so I worked in Ontario, Canada for a few years before I relocated to Michigan, where I am right now. Um, and so not only was I having new beginnings from a technical perspective, but I was having new beginnings from a personal perspective, meeting new people, new um, technical people and people in my personal life in many different locations. And, and I was building up interests um, in things both inside and outside of the company, which I'll talk about in a second. And as my career progressed, I became a manager. So you'll see that here at the upper right. That's like, you know, somebody in fancy clothes. Um, but I've never lost my desire to be in the middle of things, you know, um, creating things, building things, helping robotics teams, helping students like you. Um, but I became a manager and learned to lead people and do that well. 
And then I also had the opportunity to move on in my career from manufacturing engineering to um, facility engineering. And I led the entire global facility team uh, for General Motors. So what does that mean? I was in an organization called Sustainable Workplaces where we do everything for the workplace for every person at GM. So our, my engineering team was was structural engineers and civil engineers and mechanical engineers and electrical engineers and environmental engineers, architects. And, and, and that team together, we built manufacturing plants, we built office buildings, we built proving grounds to test new vehicles, including electric vehicles. Um, we built warehouses, we did all kinds of things all over the world. Um, and so once again, new beginnings. I didn't know anything about architecture, right? I didn't know anything about civil engineering, but guess what? I learned a lot and I was able to support my team and we all learn from each other. And then most recently I moved into leading diversity, equity and inclusion for the company. And you might say, like, first of all, what is that? And what that is, it's a very people focused role where we ensure that everybody at the company has a great chance to succeed, particularly those that may be due to societal or historical um, situations in different parts of the world haven't had as much opportunity. So that includes women in engineering. That includes, you know, people that are Hispanic or they're black or, you know, that maybe have come from Brazil and the Latino population, um, people that have disabilities in engineering. And, uh, and, and I'm sorry, throughout the company. And so what we're doing is we're ensuring that the people with diverse backgrounds can come in to a really high performing organization and do exceptionally well. Throughout my career, I've been able to travel the world in, in doing all the things that I described. And so, um, you know, the future is bright and the future is also challenging. So these are pictures of me doing different things. I'm a swim official. I was a robotics mentor for many, many years. I'm a Girl Scout. I'm a martial artist. I'm a professional. Um, and uh, this is me teaching a young man at our dojo. Um, I, I spend time, so it's important in life, no matter what you do, no matter what age you are, from right now to wherever you go in life, that you spend time developing yourself, but also contribute to the community and also give yourself time, right? Give yourself time to do the things that you want to do and that you enjoy, because that helps you grow. And the other great thing about contributing in different places is those are new beginnings. Those are places where you learn more about yourself, yourself, you learn what you're interested in, you can apply it, and then you can use it in other places. You know, even today, when I was listening to you all share what you shared in terms of the electric vehicles that you've created, and I listened to how you work through some of your challenges, it gave me a couple things to think about, right? So I'm growing from you. Um, just as you're growing from your experience with Engineering Tomorrow today. And so I highly encourage you to figure out where you can give and grow and take on new challenges because our presence as people is always evolving every single day with every, experiences, every experience that we have, right? And we get to make decisions, even though there are times when it may not feel like all the decisions are ours, particularly now you're still in high school and your parents may have something to say or your grandparents or your teachers, but we have the ability to make decisions that lead us into the future. Um, and I just wanna give out a shout out to all, um, all the young ladies on the call today. You know, this is a, a patch that I designed for Girl Scouts um, as I lead the board on the Girl Scouts right now, but uh, lead like a girl is one of my favorite sayings. And so, um, and hopefully you can take that away. You know, leadership is something that we all can do and we all can do it in our own way. So, you know, regardless of how you identify, leadership is something that you will always be doing in anything that you do. Um, and so it's just by virtue of setting that example and, and, um, and being who you are, okay? So I'm gonna pivot a little bit. Um, that's a bit about me, how I grew up, and you can ask questions later. I wanna shift and, um, and talk a little bit about this world we're in. Um, you all just experienced a great lab and you practice building vehicles that are powered um, um, by electricity. And you also learned a little bit about solar panels, which can harness power from the sun 
and 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 generate power then for things that can be powered, um, you know, by electricity. So now you have renewable energy powering that vehicle, which is super exciting. This is something that we couldn't have imagined, let's call it 70 years ago. And when solar panels first were created, they were so expensive that very, very few companies could even afford to think about utilizing them. And now the technology has evolved with the help of engineers to the point where people have solar panels on their homes and that technology will continue to evolve. And, and that's one example of how technology evolves and it's literally changing the face of the future of energy at this point. So it's, we're in a very, very rapidly changing world. And we're in one where we're talking about having vehicles powered by alternative sources, whether that be batteries, fuel cells. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but this is not um, the 20th century anymore, right? This is the 21st century and we're doing amazing things. And the question is, how might you be prepared? Well, a couple things. So this is a, a, a slide that I really love um, from my company, from General Motors, where you know we have the opportunity to right now to be working with another great organization that you already know I love, which is which is um, Lockheed Martin and NASA, and and uh, we're working to innovate for the future of um, lunar landings, right? Um, but but here's the deal: engineers innovate. That's what we do. Um, and, and born to innovate may be a little bit misleading, but what it really means is when we have curiosity and we build skill, um, whether it's uh, going to activities like the one you have today, eventually going to engineering school, et cetera, we create a capacity to innovate, to do things that have never been done before. And when we have that capacity, we need to use that capacity. And so you have engineers all over the world and, and, and that are using their capacity to innovate to change the future. That is what creates this rapidly changing world when combined with many other disciplines and things like that. But without the people that are building the skill to innovate and then using that capacity to innovate, that change doesn't actually occur, but it does occur right? And people like you, students like you, turn into professionals like me that literally change the world. This is a ventilator. And um, all of us have um, recently been through the pandemic. And um, as you know, General Motors is a car company. But during the pandemic, what we needed was not cars, right? Because no one was going anywhere. What we needed was to keep people alive. And, um, and so here we are, a company of engineers <laughs> and a lot of other technical people, finance people and technologists and researchers and designers. And, and we thought, you know what? We think we can help. And so we partnered with a company that designed um, and built ventilators, but they were building them at a very slow speed. And we said, you know, we think we can help you. We think uh, we can partner with you and help you manufacture these ventilators at a faster speed. And that is gonna help keep people alive during this pandemic. And so here we are, people built to make vehicles that all of a sudden we're working to figure out how to make ventilators. And I think it's a great story about the power of engineering because um, once again, engineers solve problems. They learn how to think. They don't know what all the problems are going to be. They don't know all the answers ahead of time. So here we are with a brand new problem, something we've never thought about and working in teams and listening well to each other and hearing from other people's experiences, which is what we do when we have uh, diverse environments with people from different backgrounds, with different experiences, we were able to ramp up ventilator production to, to rates that were going to help save lives um, in the United States and, um, and, and do that basically starting from, from almost nothing, starting from a simple you know, process. And we said, we can make that process better. 
We can make that process faster. We can make sure we don't sacrifice quality. We can do it while keeping people safe that are doing the work. And we can ensure the safety of people that use this equipment, right? Um, all within a matter of weeks. So we went from zero to full production in a couple months. And, and that's what engineering can do. Super exciting. So um, Milton had a picture that uh, highlighted a little bit of this earlier, but this is the, the batteries, the Ultium batteries that power our electric vehicles at General Motors. Um, what's really cool about the Ultium batteries, these are the, some of the battery packs down here at the bottom of this vehicle chassis. What's super cool about them is they stack like Lego blocks, right? So for different size vehicles, we can have different battery configurations. Why is this important? Well, it's important because we know that in order for everyone to have access to electric vehicles, this is an equity um, consideration in terms of transitioning to electric vehicles, we have to have vehicles that are different sizes and at different price points. And so what we chose to do was to design an architecture that can vary so that we can have vehicles at different sizes and different price points so that people can find an electric vehicle that's going to fit them over time as we start to launch electric vehicles. So those, those base foundations of, of the battery and the battery design and, and how it stacks and how it goes together um, are very important to how we're looking at electric vehicles in the future. Different companies are gonna do this different ways. One of the other exciting things about engineering, there's more than one way to solve a problem. But the point being that what's really important as we move forward is that electric vehicles are available to people that need them for their life and their livelihoods, and they'll be able to reach them at different price points. So this idea is us bringing everybody in, right? So using the diversity of our team to bring everyone into the future that we're creating. Um, um, in the automotive industry and frankly beyond that industry because many, many uh, types of mobility will be, will be powered by alternative um, power sources. And so when we think about vehicles specifically, we want to ensure that the diverse team that we have at our company and the diverse teams at other companies are bringing their experiences and their awareness of what's going to be necessary to reach people in all different communities, bringing it to bear in the designs that we're creating, and then offering those designs to people from all different backgrounds um, with all different needs. And, and so the idea of diversity, as I, as I tell you a little bit about the importance about, of diversity and equity and inclusion, is the fact that having diverse people working on engineering teams creates outcomes that are going to benefit more people. So if you have women on teams, if you have disabled people on teams, if you have people that grew up in urban environments, in the city, and people that grew up in, on the farms, and people that grew up in the suburbs, and people that have lived in India, people that have lived in Mexico, and people that have lived in the United States together working on teams, then when you're trying to do something that's meant for people around the world, you have a much, much, much better chance of doing that well and of continuously improving what you've done. And I already saw all of you out there working on continuous improvement on your vehicles, even on the screen, which was absolutely awesome. And that's what we do. So diversity helps ensure that the products that are being created are going to meet the needs of the customers that you want to reach. And all of that product creation, right? So we've talked about lunar rovers, we've talked about electric vehicles, you know, I could talk about last mile delivery vehicles and all these different things that are powered by alternative energy sources. All of this happens because of people, all of it. None of it happens without people. And by the way, when people talk about companies, companies are kind of made up of people. Right, it's not some entity, it's a, it's a group of people doing great things, ideally, right? And so when you think about inclusion, so I've talked a bit about equity in terms of equity of everyone getting an electric vehicle, talked a bit about diversity, the diversity of people that are driving the progress. And then there's this idea of inclusion. Inclusion is about ensuring that the ideas of all of those diverse people 
are actually coming to bear. What I like to say is that inclusion leads. Inclusion is the fact that is, is honoring the fact that you matter as an individual, creating an environment where you are valued, where your ideas will be heard, where your ideas can be maybe moshed together with other people's ideas, so that you can come out with a great solution because every time your idea is heard doesn't mean that's the one that's picked. I'm sure you all learned that today, right? Inclusion means creating an environment where people feel comfortable being themselves. And so when you create an environment where people feel comfortable being themselves, feel comfortable asking questions, feel comfortable bringing forward their ideas, and you couple that with an equitable environment where people get what they need to succeed, right, regardless of kind of what their starting point is, then all that diversity that exists naturally in all of the different people will actually power a much stronger progress than if we just bring people together and say, get something done. So my current role is to take diversity, equity, and inclusion and make it such that it goes to work in the business and the business does um, more impactful work because of it. So with diversity, equity, and inclusion, we value perspective of team members. We support each other. We work well in teams. We're constantly building skills so that people have the opportunity to continue to grow. We're very transparent about how we do things. So we're very honest about what's working well and what's not. That includes our business, that includes our progress with people and diversity in the workplace. Um, and doing all of that helps us innovate better, it helps us be more agile, and it helps us grow both as individuals and as a company. So that's kind of how it all goes together. Now, I want to talk really briefly about skills, because you all may be wondering, like, okay, at a company like GM, what kind of skills are necessary? Well, we, we bring in a lot of engineers into our company of all different types. You've heard me name almost every type of engineer, including chemical, including material engineers. We have them as well um, in our company. And I could go on and on. Um, aerospace engineers are at General Motors as well. Um, and so we hire a lot of engineers. We also bring in people that, have, that are in the skilled trades to help us actually um, you know, install all of that machinery and equipment I talked about earlier and run it and make sure it continues to run well and keep people safe. We have a lot of technology team members um, that have different technical skills that, that fill in some really important gaps um, that, that can't um, exist if the company is going to perform well. We look for people that are agile, people that are willing to learn, people that, are, that have um, the ability to fail and stand back up and keep going, um, people that'll speak up. Um, people that will ask questions, people that are curious, and, and ones that know how to start over when something isn't going the way it was originally planned. Um, so people have tenacity, you know, stick to itiveness, you know, a bit of a bit of grit, right? A bit of, you know, don't quit. Um, really, really important. Um, and people that know how to admit sometimes when they've made a mistake. Okay. Um, that's what we are certainly looking for. So I'll end with this. Uh, there were a couple questions that came in ahead of time in terms of, you know, how do how are we preparing for the all electric future in terms of um, giving people the skills that they need? Um, we do a few things at General Motors, and I work with a lot of other companies in the job I'm in right now. And I'll tell you, what I'm telling you right now is is what many many um, large companies like ours and organizations. Um, like like NASA and, and, and different agencies are doing. Um, we skill people inside of the business. So, you know, the electric vehicle itself, what's interesting is a lot of the vehicle, about 80% of the vehicle is the same as, you know, the internal combustion engines, about 20% of the vehicle changes. And so one thing we have to do um, is continue to skill team members on both the legacy portions of the vehicle, because those are evolving as well, they're becoming more digital, you know, more, um, more user interaction, more ADAS. I don't want to use too many acronyms, but there's the, the, the traditional part of the vehicle is also evolving. And so we make sure that our team members have skills so that they can make that evolution happen and that they can create those vehicles. 
And then we also identify way ahead of time what skill sets are going to be needed um, for the, the major components that are changing. And so we identify those and then we determine how we're going to skill up. Sometimes we hire people with those new skills. And, um, and then a lot of times we create um, you know, uh, training within the company um, for people that are both uh, salaried and working hourly jobs, maybe skilled trades, maybe engineers, to build the skill they need for the new technology. Um, and we do that all while making sure that people are safe. Um, um, so we kind of use our strengths, which is launching new vehicles, and then we add to it with new skills. But then we also partner with other organizations that can help us think about what we need to be paying attention to. So we don't think that we know it all on our own. So we talk to other companies and we talk to governmental agencies and, and, and we talk to community partners. And sometimes we form partnerships with different organizations with different key skills so that we can be kind of on the bleeding edge, the front edge um, of knowledge and make great decisions. And then the last thing we do is we partner with community organizations because sometimes the skill that needs to be built is better built by a workforce development company or organization that's outside of our company. And so we partner with them to um, build skills and then we hire people into our business from the communities where we're working. And, and so we put all of that together and that's kind of how we ensure that we're gonna have the right people for the electric future, okay? And similarly, we, we, we also use partnerships and community to make sure that as we move forward in electric vehicles, that we're gonna have the infrastructure for charging, that we're gonna be moving toward more renewable energy sources and things like that, that we're going to have resiliency in our power grid. So that also takes um, partnerships and community engagement so that we can get all the pieces of the puzzle put together, okay? So with that, um, I hope you're confident. You know, I've had a, a great journey and from the moment I had no idea what an engineer was, um, through my career where I've, where I've uh, you know, designed machines that are, that are bigger than most people's houses. I've launched all kinds of vehicles. I've, I've put together, you know, you know, really cool technical solutions um, that we had no clue of in the beginning. Um, and all of that has been in the interest of creating a better, more sustainable future. And so I'm really glad to have been able to participate in that um, and know that you can do the same. So take the leap because it's really about embracing all those new beginnings and opportunities and not ignoring your curiosities and the ideas that you have.